Good evening, kitties. It's your old pal here, the Crypt Keeper. And tonight, I'm here to serve up some morbid makeup fun. <laughs> this year, we have looks that cut, looks that crawl, and some that are ghoulishly glamorous. So sit back and enjoy the ride, because tonight, Hanzoween has risen from the grave. <laughs> What is up, my Hans fam? Are you guys as hyped out for Hans Wien as I am? I hope so. I'm so excited to show you guys what I have up my sleeve. Oh, man. If you're new to my channel, Hans Wien is 31 tutorials in the month of October, which means a new tutorial every damn day. Hell yeah. All products will be listed down below and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss a beat. I wanted to start this season off with a bang, so here is the lovely Crypt Keeper. Let's get started. First off, I popped in some icy blue contacts and a bald cap already applied. To give the illusion that the bald cap is blended nice and deep like into my skin, I apply a little bit of liquid latex over the edges. A couple layers should do just fine because most of it will be covered up anyways. While that's drying, use a pencil to draw out the Crypt Keeper's features. Here, a reference picture is going to be key because we are trying to create our face shape into his, you know, dead corpse one. It doesn't have to be perfect, just use it as a general guideline. Pulling latex out of your hairy parts, like your eyebrows, your eyelashes, are a bitch and a half, so make sure to put down some Vaseline first before you apply latex. Now with the wedge sponge, I am going to start putting down that latex on top of his more pronounced features. This is just the shitty store-bought kind because I did want to make this look accessible to everyone. For example, we will be molding the entire face out of just some good old cotton balls. Spread the cotton ball out into the, its desired shape and just pop it on top. Do this while your latex is a little bit tacky and then cover that completely in another layer of the latex. I also found that it helps me to use a little bit of Vaseline between each step because it gives your fingers a little bit of give. When working with cotton, it can get very piecey and want to stick to your finger, so this will help you out. Again, cotton can be really sticky, so to keep it in place, I use dabbing motions with my wedge sponge after it's adhered to the first layer. And this is the part where you're just gonna go ham. You're gonna just put this cotton and latex absolutely everywhere, all over the mouth. You're gonna layer it on the cheekbones. You're just gonna go in with more and more and more. I worked around my whole face in stations. Basically, I would start on one side of my face and work towards the other side, adding little layers of cotton as I go, because before you add another layer on top of one, you want it to completely dry. You could even use a blow dryer between some of the steps, because sometimes this shit takes a really long time to dry, and a blow dryer got you covered. My whole face is probably about four to five layers of cotton, I would say. So I wanted this to be absolutely as three-dimensional as possible. And again, keep looking at your reference picture. That will really help you to make sure that you're really enhancing the features that you need to be enhancing. If you're having a hard time with layering and all the cotton and it's getting real bumpy, you can always take your finger into a little bit of latex and use it to smooth it all out. On to the paint job. I'm using some cream foundations for this one. Creams will hold really well onto these more three-dimensional looks instead of some of these water-based ones that may slide around. With a more tan foundation shade, I'm really pressing this into my face. I look like bread right now. And you want to set this with a generous amount of powder so it doesn't go anywhere. Setting it will also make it easier so that your detail paints will stick really well. For some shading and detail work, I'm just using a little bit of a brown cream paint and blending that in underneath all of the protruding areas. This is because as the light would be shining down on our face, everywhere that was three-dimensional, like under the cheekbones or under the furrowed brow, would be a shadow. This will also help to intensify our wrinkles, like our little forehead wrinkles we got going on. And we want to bring light to the center of the face, so I'm even darkening around the entire perimeter of the head. Almost like you'd normally contour, but just contour your rotting face. 
Yes. Keep adding more and more shadow as you go. This will also help to intensify the sculpt job that you did. Paint just brings that right out. Going in with black now to put in where the actual holes of his face are. He has a missing nose, so that would be black. He has some missing parts in his mouth, so that would be black. And I also did bring this down onto my neck a little bit, just because I am going to be wearing a shirt and my neck would show. You basically really want to darken where the deepest set wrinkles of his face would be. With a lighter foundation shade, I also did highlight just a little bit. This would be more towards the high points of our face, the top of the cheekbones, top of the head, you know. I made some little human teeth out of polymorph plastic earlier, so I am putting some prosade down on the spots that I do want, and then just gluing those teeth down. Make sure that you do have a little gap to, uh, you know, eat and drink out of. I made sure that I had a little bit of a slit so I could still stick a little straw in there. <laughs> And using a little bit of water activated paint, a little bit of yellow and white mixed together, I wanted the teeth to look a little aged. Grime up the teeth a little bit with some more brown cream paint around the edges of them just so that they look a little more three dimensional. We don't want this to look flat. We want to bring in some more color. So using these alcohol paints and a stippling sponge, I'm going to add a little bit of mauve and red to it to kind of look like the pores of the skin, kind of some bro broken blood vessels underneath the skin, that'll give it a more realistic feel. The hair is definitely my favorite part. I just put a little bit of prosade down and cut some pieces of a wig up and just put that against the two sides of my head. If you are wearing this out, you could even cut up a wig and actually glue part of the entire wig to your head, but I wanted to go with a very, very sparse hairdo, you know what I'm saying? And this is the entire look. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and love this Crypt Keeper. Use the hashtag Hansaween so I can see your badass recreations, and follow me on Snapchat and Twitter, because I'm going to be posting hints regarding the next looks. I just love the fuck out of you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Woo!